have a canvas. If you have a canvas, that will work. Um, you can also use block paper, just like a thicker drawing paper. I actually, let me see if I have one that I can show you. Um, I actually do not, but it's just thicker paper you can use, okay? So you can either use a canvas, this is a 25 by 35, um, or you can use just paper. Um, I have my paints ready. I have a bunch of colors with me, but you can just use your primary colors, red, blue, yellow, black, and white, and we can mix them to create all the colors that you need. Okay, and I'll guide you through that as well. Um, I have two brushes. I always teach with two brushes, a big brush and a small brush. If you don't have two brushes, it's fine. You can use one brush, but I like to have two because we have areas that are thinner and areas that are not as thin. So a bigger brush will help with those areas. You do need a water bowl, okay? Every time you switch the color, I'm gonna tell you, okay, let's say you have blue on your brush. Let's change it. You're gonna push to the bottom of your water, give it a tap, and then wipe it. If you have a cloth or a paper towel, give it a good wipe, and you can move on to your next color, okay? We are gonna start. So, this is a beautiful painting. I love this one. Um, let me make sure I'm in your view where everyone can see me. If you have questions, just type them. Hi, Farah. <laughs> um, okay, so here we go. We are gonna start with the background and really marking off the section. So, we have the background. It fades from blue to purple to peaches, peach-ish pink to blue and then we have this beautiful like it's kind of the it, perspective this is what's close to you right this is the land this is the water this is your horizon line this is the sky and we have our moon okay so we are going to start by just drawing out our horizon line and then we'll begin everything else hi everybody i see you joining it's nice all right, hi Robin, <laughs> hi Shines, hi guys, so cute. I haven't done this in a while. In the beginning of Corona, I did this live and it did real well. And then we started with the virtual paint parties and then Corona got better, kind of, and then now it's kind of not, so I'm back again. All right, here we go. Start with your, everyone get your smaller brush if you have your smaller brush, okay? We're just gonna start by marking off our horizon line. The horizon line is the shoreline, which is right here. It's about four fingers up. And on our canvas, since the canvas is bigger, it's about five big fingers, okay? So we're gonna take our small brush, we're gonna dip it in the blue. If you guys do not have paint, you could totally do this with crayons. You could do it with marker, you could do it with pretty much everything, okay? Hold your paintbrush like a pencil. Don't hold it here, because you don't have any control over your brush. Move your hands down closer to the bottom. Hold it like a pencil. We're starting about five fingers up and we're just doing a line that goes across. You need a little bit of water on your brush depending on what paint you're using. If you're using acrylic paint, um, you definitely need water on your, to mix with it. If you're using gouache, it's have a gouache, it's already a bit watered down so don't do too much water or it'll start to drip down your page. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're, made, we're dividing, okay? So we have, this is gonna be water, and then we have the, the whole top. So let's switch to our bigger brush. Find your big brush if you have it. Dip it in the water, and then dunk it in the dark blue or the blue that you did the horizon line with, okay? And what I want you to do is just slowly pull the brush across. Okay, you're gonna start from the left, you're gonna pull it to the right, and you're gonna continue moving downwards. All right, so pull to the right, pull to the left, touch each side of the canvas. It's like we're doing laps in the water, from one side touch to the other side. Continue making our way down, okay? All the way down to the bottom of the canvas. For those who are joining, I do do this in kind of Hebrew, my Hebrew is not great, but I, you know, we do paint parties. Um, it's not just for English speakers. Um, and we come out to you, or you can join one of our live events. We have them pretty much every day, and they're a lot of fun. Okay, 
All right, so we're going back and forth, up the sides, and we have done our horizon line. So horizon line is from here down. Excellent job. All right, so we will wash our brush. You can totally go back and rewind this. You'll be able to watch this at your own pace. I'll leave this up for you guys, okay? So we are gonna wash our brush because we're switching colors now. The best way to do that is to push in a cup or a bowl, push down, give it a tap. Always keep a paper towel or a cloth, give it a, a nice wipe on there. All right, let's start with our beautiful background. We will be starting pretty much with the same color down here, slight bit darker, and I'll explain. And then we'll add and we'll add lighter colors, and we're gonna continue all the way down by changing the colors. So on our plates, if you have a paper plate, you're gonna put blue, all right? This is a darker blue. You're gonna add a tiny drop of black. I have a little bit of black on my brush, and I'm going on the side, I'm gonna mix a little of the black into the blue to create a much darker tone, okay? To get a bit of a darker tone there. I'm going to re-dip my brush into the water. I'm using my fingers as a measuring tool. So I'm gonna come down about two, three fingers, and I'm going to bring that darker blue across, just like we did at the bottom, one side to the other, if it gets dry, you need to add water, okay? You can always reapply the paint as well. And you're gonna come down about three fingers, okay? Three fingers down, just like this. Now the thing is, you really can't let it dry because we wanna now fade it into the next color. So you do wanna be using uh, water because if it dries, it's harder to blend. So what we just did was we did the top. Keep in mind this is smaller, so we're making this bigger. We want to now take our paintbrush, same brush. We're not switching anything. You're just going to dip it back into the water. Okay, give it a nice dip into the water. We are going to dip it into just blue. Remember we made dark blue with the blue? We're not using the dark blue. We're going to be using this blue right here now, okay? So you're gonna dip it into the blue. You're not starting under. You're slightly overlapping the previous color, okay? So we're starting roughly here. We're going to pull our brush with the blue over the line that it stopped, but we're, you know, we're slightly overlapping and we're rubbing back and forth. That's how we blend. We're gonna go back and forth, back and forth over until it like fades out so we can't see. We don't wanna see it like, okay, dark blue, blue, pink. We want it to kind of flow together. So every time we slightly overlap the previous color and again, we're gonna come down about three to four fingers. If it's too divided, just rub over it until it fades out. I'm just putting my air conditioning. All right, all righty. So we're just gonna go back and forth. You can already see the blending here, the fading. So we get to now move on to purple, okay? So what we're gonna do is, we don't really wanna wash our brush too much because we wanna keep the old color on while we're adding in a new color because we're just mixing. So what I suggest is just wiping your brush. Don't wash it, give it a good wipe and dunking it into the purple, this color right here. Okay, if you don't have purple, just take red and blue and mix it together. And take the blue from before, add some red to it and that makes the purple. Okay, so I'm taking my purple, I'm getting my brush wet and I'm overlapping the previous color again. I'm going over the previous color and I'm bringing the purple down, okay? So I'm going back and forth, but I'm not leaving it divided. I'm rubbing, 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 rubbing back and forth and continuing, let me get more purple, 
I'm continuing down another three fingers, okay? Right to left, back and forth. Okay, just bringing it down. If you find that there's too much paint or it's divided, just wipe it off on a towel. Like, let's say, let's just say someone did this. They put, let's say they had a big glob of blue there and they didn't like that. So they're gonna take their brush, give it a wipe on your cloth. All you do is with a dry brush, just rub over it. Rub over it back and forth and it'll just make it disappear. Okay, pull the brush. Okay, so now you can see what we're doing. We're going downwards until we meet the horizon line. We're up to purple now. We need to bring it to a pink tone. So if you don't have pink, you can just take red and add some white into it until you get the tone that you want. Um, I do have pink, but what you can do if you don't have it is just start mixing the red and the white together. Bring the red into the white. Don't bring the white into the red or it'll eat it up because red is a much darker color. And just mix until you get the color that you want, okay? So I'm gonna mix, and I like that pink tone right there. You can always make it a bit darker if you want, if you find that it's not the color you want. Make sure your brush is wet so that it flows back and forth. Of course, we're slightly overlapping the previous color. We're not starting here, we're starting here. And it's still gotta be kind of wet, so we really wanna push. So look what happened you see it's very divided there. So all you're gonna do is wipe your brush and rub over it with a dry brush until it fades. And you will just continue downwards another, let's do four fingers this time, come down four fingers. Okay. Down four fingers, pull it back and forth. You can always just even go over it a little bit. It's supposed to be relaxing. This isn't just for kids. <laughs> My The adult paint nights are actually very popular for a reason because it's so relaxing and you just get into it, you know? So enjoy. I'm mixing more paint. Basically from this point down, we're, very, we're using the same pink color um, but we're adding like different tones. So what I want you to do is after you did about three to four fingers of that pink, you can re-dip it into the pink again with your brush, but this time, okay, I'll show you what I'm doing. This time when I re-dip it into the pink, I'm adding a bit more white to it to make it fade, to make it a bit lighter, okay? So I'm just adding a bit more white to my brush. And I'm just gonna continue. You're gonna be picking up different tones. It's okay, sometimes it'll be a bit darker, sometimes it'll be a bit lighter, totally fine. Just pull the brush back and forth, right to left, each side, touching each side. You can keep adding white if you want, just to make it fade all the way down. And we're stopping. <laughs> We're stopping at the horizon line, okay? So what I did was, instead of adding more and more pink, I just added more white into it to create this fading look. If you didn't do it and you just kept the same tone all the way down, it's totally fine. Makes no difference. You can even, if you want, add a little bit more red into it. There's no wrong way to do this. In fact, be creative if you want. Have fun with it. Okay? All right, so I'll give you a second to just uh, get that going. Just bringing our colors all the way down to the horizon line, okay? Bring it down to here. And I'm going to wash my brush let me just set this down for a second i'm taking my big brush i'm washing it i'm wiping it really good because when we switch to the black um we really need it to be dry when we switch to the black it's got to be dry because the black is overlapping 
It's overlapping the wet colors behind. So if I go and take wet black on top of wet background colors, it's gonna become a big wet mess and, and drip. So we wanna really make sure that our brush is nice and dry. And here's what's gonna happen. This is really fun. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start, and I'll tell you exactly where, let's say I say halfway on the side of the canvas. It's going to curve down, it's gonna descend, and then level off, okay? Don't worry about the grass and these weeds and stuff. Let's just get the, get the shape. So what I want you to do is find your halfway mark, and then from that halfway mark, come down two fingers. So about right here. You should still be higher than your horizon line. So approximately, I'd say four fingers above the blue horizon line, okay? You're gonna dip your big brush into the black. You're going to find that spot, make a little dot there so you know where you're starting. Right there. Okay. And we're gonna start, watch how I'm curving. We're going to descend until we're about, you can even, let's mark the point. I'd say about four fingers from the right corner, you could put a little dot there. So you know kind of where it's gonna to start to level off. You see? And we're going to just squiggle up, down, curve, descend, until we reach about there. But we're gonna level it off now. Okay, so I'm coming down. I'm kind of going over my curves a little bit. Don't make them too extreme. They want gentle, gentle curves coming down, okay? Nothing too crazy. See if you can flip the video. You're, okay, let me see. Someone asked if I could flip the video. Hold on, your roll-up is reversed. Ah, I don't even know how to do that. How do I flip a video? I'm get, I understand what you're saying, but I don't even know how to do it. Thank you for telling me. Okay, well, I'm not gonna, <laughs> we're gonna leave it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna continue, um, but next time I'll have the video flipped because I'm not exactly sure how to do it. Okay, so let's, uh, hold on a second. Hold on one second. She, someone messaged me saying that it's backwards, like the letters, but I don't know, I can't do it right now, but thank you so much for telling me. Okay, so we're gonna take the black and we're just gonna start by filling it in, okay? Go and fill it in, make sure your brush is not wet, okay? Just take your time, fill it in. Relax, hold it like a pencil, move your hand lower, hold it here, okay? Don't hold it here, because you won't have any control where the brush is going, okay? Move your hand down, that way you have a lot of control, and, and really anyone can do this. I, I always tell, I'm doing a paint party on Friday and everyone is I think over 80. It doesn't matter what age, it's all about how you hold the brush and, the, and just, you know, the guidance. So just take your time, hold the brush comfortably, and just fill it in, okay? Just fill it in, it's black, so don't worry about what direction you're doing it. Okay. Someone had messaged me asking if I do these paint parties um, live or in person, and someone else messaged me asking if we do them virtually, and the answer is yes to both. Um, I will post, there is a link, it's www.paintpartyevents.com. We have a virtual paint party option. The tab is there. You can sign up for any public event. We also have um, live paint parties where you can just book us and we come to you, whether it's me or one of my artists or both of us. Um, and we come out to you and we bring, so normally I bring easels and all that stuff, but because of Corona, I'm not sure I'm going to keep reusing the easels right now. Um, I have to figure out, this is such a new, a new uh, world. 
Um, but the, the, definitely everything else. The canvases, they're wrapped and everything's nice and clean and, and I will alcohol up the uh, paintbrushes. All right, so here we go. That is what we have. Yes, I come to Jerusalem often. Yeah, I'm there a lot. I mean, I think that's where most of our clientele is in Jerusalem. So definitely there. Um, so yeah, I'm ha I, I saw that you messaged me, so I will definitely answer you afterwards. I'm sorry, but I will get back to you. <laughs> okay, here we go with that. We are going to now have some fun with this. Let's switch to our small brush. If you guys have a small brush, go ahead and find your small brush. This is my small brush. And we need to do a few things. First of all, we're waiting for the background to dry before we do the moon because it's just too wet right now. Second of all, we're going to do these weeds or there's a name for these and I can't remember what they are. You guys are welcome to write it to me, but these plants are and um, we're going to add a bit of white into this afterwards. So go ahead, take your small brush. We haven't used it yet, so get it wet because we haven't used it yet. And wipe it. And we're going to start by dipping it into the black, okay? Make sure you wipe it. You don't want the black just dripping everywhere. Roll it into the black, okay? And what we're going to do is every time we do little lines. I'll just start from the black. Hold on one second. I just dropped this. Hold on one second. You can ignore my big black smudge on here. Okay, so every one of these lines is going up in different directions. So hold it like a pencil and you want to start from the black and you come up and flick. You come up and flick. Every one of them is at a different height. It's at a different length, different direction. Okay, each one is just going a different way. You do want one kind of close to the border up here. Don't worry about the tops yet. We're not doing these little tops. I don't know if you can see that, but we're not doing that yet. Just have fun. Hold it like a pencil and begin. Apply more pressure when you first push and then release the pressure and that's how you make it thin towards the top. I'll show you again. If you're starting, it's always thicker and then gets thinner. So apply pressure and then release and that's how it thins it out. Apply pressure, release. Apply pressure, release. Okay, so each time as you're coming up, you do want it to get thinner and they can overlap, they can crisscross, it doesn't matter. If you make a mistake, it doesn't matter because you can just add another line there. Just add a bunch of them, this will take a little bit of time, so enjoy. You're gonna do this all the way down. But when you get to the bottom, make sure they go up and down. Let me show you what I mean. Ignore this black spot right there, I had a spill. These are coming at an angle, but as we come down, they're more up, like you go at an angle until you get down here. These come up, like more straight up, not as if they're falling. Um, let me continue with you guys. All right. <sighs> Keep going. It's funny because when I teach my classes, like I don't feel the need to like keep talking while I'm teaching because like, you know, everyone's chatting, but it's just me right now. So I'll just, I guess, keep talking. Um, keep doing this until you get all the way to the bottom. For those who are just joining, welcome. We are doing a paint party live. I do these pretty much every day. We have a nice variety of paintings you can choose from for our virtual events as well as our live events. Um, we ask for a minimum of 10 people to come to you. Um, although if you're not so far, we can um, sometimes do less than 10 and we can work with up to 100 people. Um, generally, I come about an hour before to set everything up. 
Um, I bring everything except tables and chairs. So we just ask that you provide that. And it's a lot of fun. You can pick out any painting you want and we go through the process with you just like I did now. Um, if you don't have a group, you can join one of our public events. Right now, it used to be at Mike's place, um, but because of the situation, we're doing them online. So I have we have a site, an e-commerce site that you can just click on and join an event. All right, so I did the lines. Okay, now the tops of them look like this. We did a line that comes up, right? But the top, it's a bit more rounded, okay? The shape is kind of like an almond. It comes around and around. Around, curve, curve. Curve, curve. I'll do it again on here. They come, let me come to the top. I'm gonna go curve like that and curve and we fill it in like that, okay? Curve and curve. You do not need to do that on every one. Don't do that on every one. Pick a few and do it on whatever, whatever you want. You do not need to do all of them because it'll take away from the, the look. Just pick a few of them. It can, don't forget the ones down here. Work your way down. Um, don't forget that some of them are shorter than others. So you might want to do one a little bit lower. Okay. All right. All right. Hi, Nikki. Wow. Another paint party lady is joining us, but she teaches paint parties overseas, but she's incredible. So nice to see you, Nikki. <laughs> All right, so anyways, so we worked our way down, we did our lines, we did our little almond shapes at the ends. Let's take our small brush, give it a wipe on your cloth, everyone, and dip it into the white, okay? We need to add some highlights into this. We need to bring it out, make it not one dimensional. So if you look at, ignore this, there was a spill. If you look at each one of these, there's a tiny bit of white. You can also see there's some highlights in here, okay? So what I want you to do is take your small brush, dip it into the white, okay? Small brush, dip it in the white. Remember, hold it like a pencil. Make sure you have a lot of control over your brush because we're working with smaller areas. I want you to take that white. Also, you already had black on your brush, so it's really important that you get that black off before you do this, so push into the water wipe it on the paper towel and dip it into the white after you put it in the paper towel because you want it to be dry, okay? Each one, you're adding a little bit, not a lot, okay? You're having a little bit of highlights on the ones that had that, that almond shaped at the tops. Oh, Marsha, thank you. I miss you. Oh my gosh, I miss life, <laughs> real life. Um, so we're going to add it inside and you can do a few little highlights, each one of the weeds, I think that's what they're called. You can do some white, little white in there. Don't overdo it, okay? Otherwise it'll take away from the painting. A little bit of white. You can also take some white, do a little bit of highlights. What that means is you're not going to overdo it. You're just taking it and adding some white and kind of rubbing over it so that it's not too bold. It's just enough. It's like when you see someone with highlights in their hair most of the time, it's kind of subtle, okay? So you don't want to overdo it. Just kind of bring it in and no one to stop. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do now is hope that this is kind of dry. We are gonna keep with our small brush, wash off anything that's on it, because we're using white now, like solid white. So wash your brush. Pencil, hold it like a pencil, hold it low. Go up to the right side, 
You can keep it centered, but not over here, like over here. It doesn't matter how big your, your circle is. Just do the best that you can, okay? And you're going with your small brush and you're gonna do a circle. If it's smaller, it's fine. If it's bigger, it's fine. The only thing I can suggest is don't go over it a million times because you're gonna start to bring the color from behind up. It's still kind of wet, so if I keep going back and forth, back and forth, the pink's gonna come through to the white. The purple's gonna come through to the white. So my suggestion is scoop the white, take a nice glob, and kind of, when you went around it, just pull that glob around, okay? After you do that, you wanna go back to your bigger brush. Take that big brush. I need more white, hold on one second. My white is mixed with black. So this is what I use, or I am using now. This is a uh, gosh, is that a gosh, tempera? Okay. So. All right, taking the white. Same as before, don't push hard and don't go over it too many times. It's gonna bring the color from behind up. Take a nice glob. You see there's a nice amount there. You're going to kind of move your glob around. Rather than pushing, pushing, pushing and rubbing, rubbing, Bad idea, because it'll start to pick the color from behind and bring it forward. Better to take a nice glob and gently just move that glob around. Okay, so if you go over the line, not a big deal. You'll fix it, it's not a big deal. Okay, go around, keep it dry. Don't have water on your brush. It will make everything mix together. After you do that, you can do a second layer. Again, very slowly. If it's too wet, you can always go back and add that second layer after we're done or even later today. Okay, it's all about the pressure and how hard you push. You push gently, you really can work. People often say, wait, my, my canvas is still wet. I can't do that yet. And the truth is, most of the time you can, as long as you're not using water and you're gently applying the color and you're moving like the glob of paint around. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit. Okay, um, basically the majority of this is done. I wanna go and add a little bit of white just to give it a pop. So you already have white on your brush. You can just take the white anywhere you want I'm not looping it. Be careful. Lines, straight lines, just very subtle lines throughout it to give it some uh, white popping through, some light, some clouds. Okay, careful, don't overdo it. Don't go like this with your hand, kind of keep it straight. If it gets to be too much, then stop. You can always rub it out. You can add a bit more down here if you want, just to get some light around the edges. And we did it. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed. You can always go back and watch this again. I'm gonna post it, publish it to the page. It won't be up there forever, um, but it'll be up there at least for the next 24 hours. <laughs> um, so thank you for joining. It was a nice group coming and going throughout the process. Feel free to join. You can go to my page or paint, par paint party events, um, virtual events, public events, and birthdays, bat mitzvahs, ladies night, bridal showers, you name it. All right. Have a wonderful afternoon. Stay safe and healthy and bye.